I hope you are ready to sweat because today we're not dealing with anything pretty. We're not dealing with CSS. We're not dealing with DOM elements, really. We're dealing with the fundamentals of JavaScript, and that is working with array methods. I found that when I forced myself to get really good at filter, map, sort, reduce, all of those array methods, I found that my JavaScript programming got a lot better. And this is really what I want to drive home today is just throw a whole bunch of examples at you and really get you better at working with these array methods. A lot of people like to call these uh, filter, map, sort, reduce. These are sort of like the gateway drug to functional programming. So what we've got here is some data, cons, inventors, and each inventor is an object. And then I've got also a people array here, which uh, just has strings, but inside of that string, the last name, comma, space, the first name. So first of all, let's kick it off here. And, and if you think you can do these on your own, please pause the video and at least try them yourself. Uh, but if you're fairly new to this stuff, then then stick with me. So first thing we want to do is get people who were born in the 1500s. So I'm going to say const 15 equals, and we'll take the inventors and we're going to filter over it. Now, the way that the filter works is you pass it a function and that function is going to loop over every single item in our array. So Albert, Isaac, Galileo, and it's going to give us the inventor. 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 It's, I don't know why I say all fancy. So what that does is we take the inventors, we loop over, and for each inventor, we can decide whether we want to keep it or not. So go here, we'll have an if statement. And we say if the inventor dot and the dot year. So that's when they were born. If the inventor dot year is greater or equal to 1500 and the inventor dot year is less than 1600 or we could do less or equal to 1599 whatever you prefer whatever reads easier for you then we are going to return true and by returning true that means we keep it and then you don't have to a lot of times i see else uh people have an else here and you return false if you do not return anything other than true or something that is truthy uh it will just throw it in the garbage. So there's no no need to return false here. You just return true if you want to keep it. So let's take a look at our variable here. We'll console.log it 15. We've got two people. Ah, this is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to show you a little tip. Console.table. Aha, very nice. So these are the people that were born in the 15 hundreds that we here have here. Now, this can be greatly reduced. First of all, we can make this into an arrow function. So delete the word function. You can delete the parentheses around inventor if you prefer, and we'll make that an arrow function. Good, that still works. And then this right here, this just is either return true or return false. So what we can actually do is do it all in line where we will just return these two things. So it's going to give us the inventor and we're going to return the result of these two things, which if both of them are true, it's going to return a Boolean of true. And if that makes you a little bit uncomfortable reading that, you can throw an extra set of parentheses around it. You can delete this. We've done it all in one line. Still works just as we planned. Good. Next one. Give us an array of the inventor's first and last names. What, what does map do? Map takes in an array it does something with that array and then returns a new array, but of the same length. I like to think of map as sort of like a factory machine where it takes in a raw material and will stamp it somehow and then re and then kick out that item on the other end. Or as filter, you can bring in 10 things and return two. Map will always return the same amount of items as you give it. So here's what we're going to do is we'll say const full names equals inventors dot map and we have our inventor and from that we are going to return the inventor dot first because that's their first name and we can return inventor dot last and console log the full names kind of works but we still have a problem with the space here so you could either concatenate in a space which will work, or you can return backticks 
and use template strings. Working great for us. Passed. Good. Next up, the sort. Sort the inventors by birth date, oldest to youngest. So if you've never used sort, the way that sort works is that you get two items and you, you have these two items in your hand and you're asked to sort just those two items. So you say, is person A older than person B? And if so, you put the older person on top. And the way that we do that is by returning one and negative one. And that's going to bubble these items up and down in the array. So we say const ordered equals inventors dot sort. And we have a function, which that function is going to give us like the first person and the second person, or a lot of people like just like to use A and B. So whatever you prefer though. So the, the first person is going to be A, the second person is going to be B. And then we will say if A dot, and we need to do it based on their birth date here. So A dot year is greater than B dot year, then we return one, else you return negative one. And that's just going to move these people up and down in the, you can sort of imagine them bubbling up and down inside of the array that we have. I'll let's take a look at what you hear. Oh, we got an error here on line 39. What did we do? Should be able to spell function, right? There we go. And now we have the uh, oldest people here while well the youngest people. Now this is really, really long. We could really uh, cut that down by doing something like this. So ordered equals inventors dot sort, and you have A and you have B. And from that, we are going to do what's called a ternary, ternary, I can't say it properly, ternary, ternary operator, whatever. Somebody once sent me a message after a talk and said, you, you said ternary wrong. And now I'm self-conscious every single time that I say it. Uh, so from that, we want to have a ternary, which is like a shorthand if statement. It was A dot year is greater than B dot year. And if that is true, return one. Otherwise, return negative one. And that is the exact same thing as what we are doing here, just doing it in one line with an arrow function, an implicit return, and a ternary operator. Let's double check that still works. Works great. Next one, uh, how many years did all of the inventors live? So what a reduce will do is we're, we're like a, a sort in a map. They will just take items in and either sort them or they will turn them into something else or they will filter them down. What a reduce will do is allow you to sort of build something on every single one. So if you've ever done code like this, where you like do like var total years equals zero, and then you you bust out the the old for loop, which one is it right here? And then you have inventors, and then you do like total years plus equals inventors. Dot, and you, you, you've done this before, right? Where you have a variable before, and then you do this crazy loop, and then finally when you're done, you can console log total years, right? Um, a reduce is just a, a much cleaner way to do that. Um, and you don't have to do this crazy square bracket I, which I've seen a lot of people have a trouble learning. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to say const total years equals inventors dot reduce. And the way that reduce works is it's going to give you sort of like your running to total or what you've returned from this function last time. So we're going to call that total. And then we it also is going to give you the inventor. And from that, we have to wrap those in some parentheses. We have an arrow function here. And from that, we are going to return the total, which is what the total was last time around. Again, all these functions reduce, sort, filter, they just loop over every single one. And then we are going to uh, return the number of years that that inventor had lived. So we're going to say inventor dot past minus inventor dot what was it? year. Now let's, let's try that. It's not going to work totally for us. Console log total years. And we get this object object seven, like what, what's going on here. And, and the problem is that that first time around, we don't have a total and it's equal to undefined. So what we need to do is just make this zero. 
and that will then allow us to add it up 523 years. Ooh, how you doing? Maybe you need to go get a drink, get a sports drink, something like that. Um, we have another one coming up here. Sort inventors by years lived. Okay. So uh, const oldest equals inventors dot. Now we're going to sort them. And we are going to get A and B. And before I do the returning one or negative one, we're going to const. We're going to create some variables so we can use that in our if statement. So say const last guy. How old did he live? A dot past minus A dot year. And then we'll say next guy is equal to B dot year. Then from that, we are going to say if last guy is greater than next guy. We are going to return one or negative one, sorry. And then else we are going to return one. Now that seems a little bit long. We can really clean that up and we can simply just say return. We can use our turn operator return next guy. If that is true, negative one. Otherwise, if that is false, return one. And that's the exact same thing as doing this if statement. We just do it in one fell swoop. To console log the oldest Actually, console dot table it beautiful this guy lived a whole bunch of years this guy didn't live as many looking good next create a list of boulevards in paris that contain duh anywhere in the name all right so let's i've got this link here and this one we're gonna have to do from uh the console i'm just gonna open it up now we've got all of these boulevards here and i need to first get the dom elements out of the page. So how would we do that? Well, we could say document query selector, but we don't know what to select. So what we have to do is get out our dev tools, inspect whatever contains this. Let's see what contains all of these here. There we go. MW dash category const cat document query selector dot MW category. So let's see what we got here. There we go. Category is equal to that div. And then we want to find the links within it. So I'm going to make another one. Const links equals, we can say category dot query selector all. Again, you can call query selector on any existing DOM element. It doesn't always have to be document. It could look inside of an existing element. And that's really why I'm doing this in two steps. I could have just said, MW category A and found all the links, but I really wanted to show you that you can call query selector against any existing DOM element to look inside of that DOM element. So I'm just going to look for links inside of that. There we go. Let's see. We got links. Haha. -ha. So this is a list of links. This is every link on the actual page. Now, what I want to do is first we're going to convert that list of links to a list of names, and then we're going to filter that list of names for only ones that include the actual name. So we'll say const de equals links dot map. Remember, if we take in a list of links and kick out a list of names. So we're going to map over each one. It's going to be a link. And from that link, we are going to return just the link dot text content. And that will give us whatever the text is inside of that rather than the entire link, because we don't really care about the, the rest of the link. So let's see what we got here. Uh oh, links.map. Oh, perfect. I'm glad we ran into this. What did I tell you in an earlier video? Query selector will return to you a node list. And if we open up the prototype, you don't see map. You see for each, but not a map. So what we need to do is change this uh, into an array because right now it's just a node list. So there's two ways we could do that. First, you can just wrap the entire thing in array.from. And that will convert it into an array. Or you might also see, see people doing something like this, where you create an array. And then you use a ES6 spread to spread every single item into the array. And again, if you've watched the ES6 videos that I've done on spreads, you'll know that a spread will take every item out of something, an iterable, which in this case is going to be a node list, and put it into the containing array. So um, I think array.from is probably a little bit more readable in this case. So let's go with that. And then we need to, this should work. Now, I can't rerun this code here because I've used cons. That's sort of one of the pains of using cons. It's going to tell you 
it's already been declared. So I just need to refresh and rerun this code here. So duh, there we go. Duh is a huge array of every single one. And then I'm just going to immediately filter that. So what I like to do with, with mine is let's just put them on their own line. The first one will map it. And then the second one will filter it. So let's say the street name, and we're going to uh, only return if the street name includes duh. So let's see what we got here. We got to refresh again and rerun this. Now duh is equal. There we go. Now we've got a subset of that initial array only containing the inside of it. Sorry for my French users. I'm we have Canadian French, which is not the same as European French. Next one, we've got a sort exercise, which is sorting the people alphabetically by last name. So we're not dealing with the inventors anymore. We're done with those guys. Now we actually want to work with people. OK, well, there's no like nice object here. So how would I do that? Well, let's go up here to the sort exercise and I'm going to say const uh, alpha equals I'm going to take the people and we are going to uh, sort over it so dot sort I'm going to have let's just use a regular function here and we can convert it to ES6 and we're going to get uh, the last one and the next one now, I don't care about returning anything just yet. What I want to do is just console log the last one just to see what we're working with. Oh, we get an error because I wrote this code in here, which this was meant to run on the Wikipedia page. And uh, here you're trying to call query selector against category. And if this category comes back with nothing, you can't call query selector against it. So you'd have to do a check there if, if you weren't sure that it was coming in. I'll just comment that out for now deal with what we've got here. There we go. So look, Beck, Glenn, Blake, William. So that is the last one. But what I really want is to convert that into a first name and a last name. So what we can do is we can say const parts equals last one dot split. And what are we going to split it on? Well, one thing that all of these people have in common is that there's a comma and a space. So I'm going to split it on a comma and a space. And let's look at the parts that we have here. OK, so now we get an array where the first thing is the last name and the second thing is the first name. It's a little bit backwards. So what we could do is we could destructure that, meaning that rather than return an array, we can put those into their own variables right away. So we say square bracket last comma first. And now if we just console log the last and the first as their own separate variables. There we go. Blake, William, Beck, William, Mick. Bedos, whatever we have there. Cool. Now we have some proper variables to work with. And then we have to do that with the next one as well. And we probably want to rename these suckers to be something that obviously we can't use last and first. So I'll say A last, A first, A first. And this one is going to be B last and B first. So that's the that's going to be the last person and the next person. So we have here. Good. Then we do our simple last name here. That's really all we're concerned about in this case. So turn a last is greater than B last. If that's true, return negative one. Otherwise, return one. Let's call it log alpha. There we go. Sorted. Blake William is the first one. Last one is Beck Glenn. Oh, we're backwards there. We need to return one and a negative one instead. There we go. Beck is the first one. Blake is the last one. So you see that we're we're actually not using this data that we've just made here. That's simply for the conversion, but we're still hanging on to the original string that we were working with. If you did want to return an array or an object or something like that, that's where reduce would come in. So my editor is yelling at me here and it's telling me that I shouldn't be using a proper function. I should be using an arrow function in this case still works just good. Whew, one more. Here we go. And this one's going to reuse use reduce sum up the instances of these. So we've got car, car, truck, truck, bike, walk, car. And I want to I want to tally at the end of the day in order what to work with. And reduce is like one of the most flexible methods that we have in an array. And this is just another way that we can use it. 
So let's say const transportation equals data dot reduce. And we are going to then give ourselves a function, which is going to be the object well, OBJ. And then the let's call it item, which is going to be car, car, truck, truck, bike on every single one. Now we need to start with an object which has to have something like a car zero, walk zero, truck zero. And if you're looking and be like, oh, Wes, I don't know what all the possible ones are. You can't just like hard code those in there. And that's right. We're just going to start with a blank object here and we'll do this uh, by ourselves. So let's go back. We're just going to start with a blank object. That's the starting and we're going to loop over every single one. So what we will do is just console log item and then return the object. And I just want to show you here that we're going to get every single item as we loop over it. Good. Car, car, truck, bike, walk, et cetera, et cetera. Now what we want to do is we need to say if well, let's do this. We'll say object of item plus plus. And usually what that would do, if we had a walk zero here, it would just increment it to one. But because we don't know if that key exists just yet, what we need to do is check for it on the end here. So we have to say if there is no object item, then object item is equal to zero. That will just set the initial one to zero, and then we can move along and increment it and return that object. So if that has worked here, console.log transportation. There we go. Object, bike, car, truck, van. So you see what they're there. I, I find that reduce is probably the hardest one for people to get, but we start with a blank object. And then every time we loop over one, we first see, is there even a zero there uh, to work with at all? If not, we need to make we need to make an entry for that. And then we go ahead and increment it. And that's really nice because then I could come along here and, and add like a like a pogo stick. And when I refresh, the key of pogo stick is going to be added. No problem to that. Actually, you probably put, shouldn't put spaces in there, but no problem added in. So woo, I know that was a lot. Um, it's just a lot of exercise. We've got another one coming up in a couple of days that we're going to go over as well. Um, but if you feel at all a little bit shaky at these, just keep doing them over and over until you get until you totally understand what's going on, as well as you feel comfortable just uh, going into a website and doing one of these Boulevard or Paris or taking some data and being able to to filter and sort over it. See you in the next one.